Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode here on the MI Gardener channel. Today we're going to be propagating honeysuckle. Now honeysuckle is a great plant. I love it for the fact that the bees get a nectar source unlike any other plant. Here with our apiary being located here, uh, we have some of the lightest colored honey and some, some of the most prolific uh, production of honey that we have anywhere. And this, it's incredible. I mean, during the time where beekeepers are complaining about their, their honey flows and, and their bees are struggling to find a nectar source, our honeysuckles are blossoming in early summer and these bees are jam packed to the brim with honey. Now, oftentimes uh, we struggle up at the cottage. Now this is at uh, my parents' house where we have the other apiary. And uh, oftentimes the bees struggle at the cottage because there's not a lot of nectar sources up there. There's a lot of grasslands, but there's not a lot of um, kind of like, uh, I guess like low lying places for, for flowering shrubs to grow. And so what I wanna do is I wanna propagate some honeysuckle and take them up there because the conditions are right to grow honeysuckle up there. It's just for some reason the honeysuckle is not in that area and I'm not quite sure why, uh, but the soil conditions are right, the temperatures are right, everything's right, it's just, it's not there. So we're gonna take some honeysuckle cuttings and I wanna make this episode about propagating all cuttings because the conditions that it takes to root cuttings the time will vary, but the method of doing so is the same across all of them. So whether or not you're propagating blueberry cuttings or uh, apple cuttings, or in our case, honeysuckle cuttings, it's the same process, okay? You don't need rooting hormones. Rooting hormones will help, and I will post a link to a very good rooting hormone in the uh, description box below. It's called Clonex. It's very reputable um, in certain industries, <laughs> but we won't get into that now. Um, but basically it will help, but you do not need it. It's an extra cost that I have not found. Uh, certain varieties do need a, a rooting hormone like apple, blueberry, and things like that. They're very difficult to root. And so rooting hormones will help you out in that case. But with honeysuckle, this stuff roots, like you, you could just have it in a wet, damp paper towel and it will root. Now, that's not the preferred method. So what is the preferred method to rooting plants? We have here a sterile potting mix. This is a sterile potting mix loaded with organic matter. The reason why it's sterile and loaded with organic matter, the two kind of conflict normally, but this has one part sand to one part uh, compost, but it's sterilized compost for one reason. When you're rooting cuttings, uh, anytime you're propagating cuttings of any kind, you have the risk of rot. And that's where bacteria and fungi take over and kind of start breaking down the cutting because it's it's not, it's, it is living tissue, but it's, the bacteria can, it's, it's very weakened living tissue. So the bacteria can get in there and, and start eating it and doing what they normally do to decaying things. And so you have a case in which uh, you lose a lot of your cuttings due to bacteria and fungal rot. So uh, by having it as, as, as sterile as possible, you're going to eliminate those things. But again, having that organic matter will keep the, the growing medium damp which is very important because if your growing medium dries out, yeah, yeah, throw them out, restart, because as soon as it dries out, you're done. Uh, so you have to keep it damp at all times, damp and high humidity. What we'll do is we will take a little wooden skewer and uh, it's gonna be about an inch taller than the cuttings and we're gonna make a little tent out of, um, just out of uh, uh, cling wrap and that's going to make sure that the humidity stays in there. You can do anything. You can take a shop, a plastic uh, shopping bag and or a plastic grocery bag and put it over the top. You just want to make sure that the humidity stays above 65 and preferably around 75 to 80 percent humidity because you want to have a high humidity environment. Another thing is, as we're going through the, the criteria to propagate cuttings successfully, is uh, high temperatures. High temperatures are very important. You will never get something to root in a cold temperature. They need uh, temperatures of above 75 degrees to do very well. I prefer to root my cuttings in around 80 to 85 degrees, but that's just me. I've had really good success with it. Other people say that 70 to 75 degrees is perfectly fine. Um, so I'm just sharing with you how I've had really good success. Um, now, the next thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you take it from plants that are dormant. If you take it from plants that are living, it's never going to work. Oh, I, I can't say never. Okay, rewind. Take that back. I can't say never. It's just you'll have 
very little success because the plant, when you take it, uh, basically when you take it from a, a living, grow, like during the growing season, okay? If you take a cutting from a plant during the growing season, that plant is just going, that cutting is basically just going to say, well, I was just removed. Okay, well, where's the compost pile? And it's pretty much just going to go to its deathbed. Um, and that's for the fact that the, basically the growth hormones that are in the branch at the time are not geared to putting down roots where you cut it off, they're actually geared to putting out more leaves. And so it's going to just try to keep those leaves alive. And you're going to find that it's never going to have the right type of hormone that will put down roots. And that's where the rooting hormone comes in place is when you put on that Clonex, it's going to help to give you those hormones needed to put, set down roots. Now, again, with certain plants, you don't need those. Tomatoes, you don't need Clonex. Um, with, uh, with these, you don't need cologne. With the honeysuckle, you don't need clonex. So with all that out of the way, we're gonna take some cuttings. I wanna show you where the best place to take cuttings are and where you don't wanna take cuttings. So let's go. All right, so a lot of people think it's advantageous to take cuttings from out here. If you cut something out here, this is not going to make a good cutting. It's too narrow. And you might have success with a few. Don't get me wrong, you might have success with a few. But these are brand new growth tips. And what you wanna look for is you wanna look for new growth but not new growth that's so new that it's this small. You wanna look for something down here. This is going to be what you want. Now you wanna remove all these branches here and you want to cut on a 45 degree angle and this is your cutting. This will give you the best results. And also what you can do is you can take your pruners and you can shave some of this off here. By, by uh, scarifying the cambium layer this, the cambium layer being the outer layer, by scarifying that, it's going to open up some of that where it's going to scab over, and it's going to form roots a little bit easier, also to really help if you're using a rooting hormone. So this is the proper way to have a cutting. You wanna have at least a couple growth points. There's about three or four, five. This one might put out a growth point, but um, you wanna have essentially a cup, uh, five, or, five or six different places where it's going to uh, put out um, new growth. And so we're gonna pop this into our soil. We're gonna get a couple more and I'll get back with you in a second. All right, while I was preparing some cuttings, I actually found something that I thought would be worthwhile to note. The greener the cutting is, the more success you're going to have with rooting. Oftentimes people take cuttings from dormant plants and it's hard to distinguish which is dead or which is alive. And you can see here very quickly which one is dead and which one is alive. You'll notice a color difference. This branch here was dead, which is why there's a noticeable color difference. These, throw them out there, they're not gonna survive. This one here, it's not gonna survive. So we're going to um, get some that are green and you wanna look for that. A very easy way to tell if it's dead or alive is by looking at the heartwood. The heartwood is basically the very center. If the heartwood is filled, then you, you have a very good chance of it being alive. If it's hollow here, it's a very good chance that it's dead. All right, so the very last thing you wanna do is make sure that the cuttings are facing up. You, a very common mistake is to put, flip the cuttings upside down on accident. They're not gonna grow like that, <laughs> they just don't. So you wanna make sure that you put the cuttings facing up and you're going to have much more success with your cuttings. So there you go. That is how you can properly take cuttings. Now we're just going to wash or wash this. We're gonna water this and uh, make sure that the soil remains damp. Also have it in a pot that has drainage holes because you don't wanna have uh, standing water in here. That's just not a good idea. It's gonna to lead to rot as well. All right, so the very last thing we're going to do is just water in our cuttings. We wanna make sure that you water them till, till uh, water starts running out the bottom of the pot. Obviously it's important to have, there you go, see? Um, but another thing that I do want to mention though, is that, like I said, this will apply to all plants. Um, this, this type of method is what you use for all plants. Now, the time that it takes to root will be different. As I said before, a lot of you are probably going to try this with like tomatoes. You've seen taking tomato cuttings. This is, it's a little bit different of an animal just because it's a soft stemmed plant versus a hard stemmed plant. They don't actually have a, well, they have a cambium layer, but they don't really have what we would consider a like a like a barky cambium layer. It's just a very it's why they're called soft stemmed plants um, because they don't have that hard bark 
outer layer. That means they can root quite a bit faster. And so you're going to, you're going to find that with things like tomatoes, um, you're going to have results in about five to seven days. You're going to start to see roots forming. Now with uh, these here, these honeysuckles, expect more like a month to a month and a half. Some of the fastest rooting um, hard stem plants are actually figs. Figs will root incredibly fast. It's just in their genetics. They root like a weed. Um, so you can do this with figs, honeysuckles, blueberries, apples. Just know that the time will differ. And as long as you stick, uh, and, and also the more cuttings you do, the better chance you are going to have of success. I guarantee you I will not get 100% to root but maybe one or two of the five that I have here will root. So you're going to have between a 20 and uh, about 20 to 40% success rate usually with most plants. Figs, you're going to have a lot higher because of that, that you know, the genetic um, advantage that you have there. Tomatoes, almost 100% chance uh, of uh, rooting there because they just root so quickly again. Um, plus they're a vine, so again, they have that genetic advantage. Um, but these plants here, uh, you know, expect at least a month and generally it won't take any more than four months. So there's a waiting period. You gotta stay patient, just keep up on it and do a lot of cuttings and you're going to be fine. Um, I typically will do this uh, at least once a year so that I have some, um, some plants in different stages of growth these honeysuckles here, are, like I said, are going to go up to the cottage and uh, they're going to be planted next year. So you want to start them now um, so they get a good root system. I'm going to throw them underneath some grow lights, keep them um, growing. And then once they have a really good root system, I'm going to actually work them uh, outside so they begin to go dormant. And then that way in the spring, I can, uh, I can pull them out of dormancy. So that'll be for another video though. But hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And as always, click that subscribe button, share this video with a friend if you enjoyed it, and Remember to grow bigger, go home. We'll catch you later. See ya. Bye.